Everybody told us just to knock this house over. Funny thing enough is when's the last time this property is occupied? She said the hurricane, so Katrina. So basically what we're gonna try to do, and I'd love to hear your comments is, should we buy this or should we not buy this? Is the juice worth the squeeze? What's the acquisition price you got it under contract for? $21,000. $21,000 all, all in. What's the potential ARV, aftermarket repaired value? I think Elaine said 170 was it right? So I would say between 140 and 180. Let's go take a look at this and see what the positives are. Do you think you need a new roof? Yes. Some of the foundation beams coming along, the main ones are rotted out. And new siding. You think you need new windows on this one? No, we can paint those. <laughs> I think you'd probably have to. This is one you got to go all the way on. I would just plan on doing new windows on this house. And I don't say that ever. But when you go all the way, there's no point in saving this crap. I'd look and say, can we stucco this house? So I would either vinyl side this or stucco this to save money on material. Mm -hmm. Because if you go and do all new siding, T111, any of those types of things, it's gonna co be costly to do that. Oof. Real quick question for y'all. This is for anybody who knows anything about plumbing. Where does the city line vent? The city vents their sewer line into your property. That's why you have that out there. That's why you have P-traps. That's why you have everything. So P-trap basically is water stopping gas from coming up. You're venting the city's line outside of your house. These are, I'm going to give another, another little trivia. What kind of pine tree is this? Spruce. Loblolly. Loblolly <laughs> pines are famous in Mississippi. They grow straight up and people own land here. And these things grow like weeds. You can tell right now, nobody's occupied this property. I mean, we'll just pull this one out for the hell of it because it ain't stay anywhere, but these things grow like weeds. After 15 years, they can harvest them. So got, a lot of guys in Mississippi will just make all their money off of uh, having pine trees. Yeah, over, underneath you can see where the pilings are starting to... See right there, where Ben... Oh, that one's, yeah, that one's falling. Yeah, and the other side, most of them are like that. So they gotta jack up the house. Or unless you do it through the middle. And you see these, found, the exterior foundation beams right here, though? All rotted. It's not that bad, right? So they use picket fences as kind of the uh, barrier over there, you see it? over there by the roof on that corner. Oh Instead yeah, of, yeah. I think that Instead works. of having the drip edge, they use picket fence. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> so this is another question. Now, do you make this a garage or do you convert this into living space? You close it off, convert it. She had previous tenants that stayed in here after and they destroyed their home, put holes in the wall, didn't take care of it, but I'm sure there was squatters at some point. Yeah, man, I don't see a problem with this fix other than I think it's, pretty much a, almost a gut, just because you're gonna be tearing off the roof. I mean, you just gotta decide which walls you save. And re I would reconfigure this floor plan. Yeah, this, I believe this one might be one that we go all the way to the studs more likely. Yeah, I, I think this is one that you do that on. I don't see any point in saving anything in here, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have a much better layout if you can plan it out and come in there. Plus, you're having to reframe everything anyways from the outside, so I don't see there's any point in saving anything in here other than maybe the exterior walls. There was definitely not a squatter in here. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a squatter. This is the other bathroom? Yeah, yes. that's the half bathroom where we may have to reconfigure the... Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're gonna do the layout, might as well reconfigure Yeah, this the... one you just tear it apart because it's also gonna be easier for those guys working on the floors yeah. once you tear it apart and you can work with everything you got. This is the nicest slippy range I've seen for a squatter. I, it did look very comfortable, look, didn't they have it? A... This might be okay to keep your kitchen here and then wall this off right here and now this is your master bedroom here and then pop this over there and you could put a master bathroom right here now i wouldn't do nothing out here other than try to fix this stuff here i was thinking like maybe make this a laundry area it might actually be the best bet because you might run out of space in there yeah definitely. yeah i'm thinking maybe make this a laundry area and you could really dress it up like where you build the whole thing out what you're saying is you want to keep the laundry out here, or you want to put it back inside? I want it inside. I'm saying yeah. that I don't like going to a laundry room. That's outside. To, that's outside. Again, all these walls can change. It could be as simple as kitchen floats on this side of the house. We're walking down to that side laundry room. I don't know. But when this thing gets reframed by that space, because it could be your bathroom, and then your laundry room could be wherever. I don't know. Right now. Yeah, so incorporating that space is part of the, the new 
Yeah, I mean, oh, so it's right here. I'm a big fan of what is called symmetry. Like if I look at that house right there, that's not symmetrical. Why not carry it out that way? But I think we just rip this thing down to studs, buy that space. Let's just say right now, we're looking at 80 grand minimum. So 80 grand minimum is what our repair bid. And we're gonna have to price. This is one we wanna price out and not wing it as much. If I was doing it myself, I'd wing it. Yeah. But because I'm teaching you the right way to do it, it's kind of like, you know, don't show them the way you do things. But this is one that we're going to want to know what our lumber cost is going to be. Here's what we need to do. First thing, we need to get architectural plans, draw them up, figure out the layout. We can get what we want done. But the other thing that we want to talk about here is fence line. But I definitely put a fence, make this almost like maybe put a fence across that since you're the end of the block. So you almost have like a sliding gate. So we could literally put like a, a rolling gate across here, which really gives it your privacy aspect of things. I think that will attract people having their privacy fence Agreed. because you'll see some beautiful homes and you're like, well, I can overcome. Like so it's saying. all about the vision, man. If you can see the, I can always see the vision. So if I'm out here and I'm in my house and I'm still seeing this stuff over here, I'm less inclined. Now, if I got an eight foot fence, I can't see something. And I got my address on my little fence post right out there with a light shooting up on it. You know, and this is all going to be cool because we're going to come and look back at this and see we did this in about six months later and see that this vision came to life. But we come out, we put our nice little pole right here. Fence line goes to eight foot, shoots right this way. And we make this thing beautiful and it's gonna be white and black. And we'll make this thing pop. The only question is how far do we go and when do we stop, right? We already know that there's no way we lose on this situation. Just how far do we go? And does it make sense to go this far? We know we want to tie in the roof line, go all the way back. What's that cost? We already know we got to tear the whole thing down. We got to add HVAC system. So let's go through the numbers. What's it going to cost for the, you just put in a similar unit and a similar square footage. What was that HVAC system? Oh, 65. What was the electrical? 95, 10. 10. So we're going to add those numbers up a little bit more for this house. Call it eight for HVAC. Call it 12 for electrical. It's 20. Plumbing was how much? 45. Call it 5,000 for plumbing. Let's call it seven. Okay, 27. So now we're at 27 for all of our mechanicals and electrical. And I'm sure we can get everything done what we talked with Alex for maybe a couple more thousand dollars. Quarters 14, 15, call it what? 20,000. Let's call it 20,000. So that's 47,000, 47, right? So now we need to know what's our drywall cost? What's our insulation cost? What's our exterior cost? What's our lumber cost? All of that other stuff we need to know. Assuming that it's not gonna be double that, which I don't think it will be, I think we'd be probably close to 90 grand. We would try to shoot for 80, okay? If we could get it done for 80, you watching everything, you paying attention to like, hey, what does it cost to stucco this thing? So probably not want to do vinyl siding on this one. That was the original plan when I saw <laughs> this, but now it's scrapped off the deal. Probably want to go with a really cool paint cutter. Probably want to go with a gate and stuff like that. Landscaping might cost you a little bit of money. Let's call that 5,000 bucks. Maybe the budget is 80 to 90. Try to get it done for that. Also, I would probably put a nice little front porch right here. Let's get some plans. Let's get somebody to sketch this out for us. You can easily do that by taking a couple pictures of the way this house looks right now, mm -hmm. going to Upwork and having someone sketch these plans out for us. Now, what's the timeline for this? You think this is a three week job? About a week and a half, I think. No, I think it'd be more in the four to five month range. Yeah, I'd say under six. Probably if you're moving pretty good, you're at, you're at four months. And if you're slowing down, you're at six. Josh, how long would this take you? I would say it'd be around four. Four months for sure. The question to y'all is, would you take this big of a risk knowing the numbers? So now you got to go figure out the numbers. Mm -hmm. Are you nervous? Nah. Are you interested in doing this one? Hey, I'm, I'm in it. Cool, man. This would be a fun one, huh? Yeah. Easy. Is that the type of flips that you were planning on doing when you joined the program? <laughs> or well, when everyone thinks about doing flips is, hey, I'm going to find this crappy house, flip it. The majority of people, when they think about crappy houses flipping, is what we now consider cosmetic flips. Yeah. That's it, man. Those are the well, easy. Cosmetic yep. flips don't usually have 100 plus. Well, actually, the cosmetic flips are, are where you make your money if you can buy them, right? You make, I mean, because if you could quick and in and out fast, you're going to make a lot more money. But I think that the man is made in doing these types of flips because you're going to learn more on this and have to think more than you did on the other one because you're doing plans, you're doing budgeting, you're doing all that stuff where you, the other one, you were just kind of you know, going in there and fixing stuff, even though that was a major one, that was a major cosmetic mm -hmm. fixer, right? This one is a major fixer with a kind of an addition on it. So this is next level. What you're doing here, and for people who say flippers are evil, you're changing a whole freaking neighborhood right here. Now you've identified it, you've done your research, 
and you're taking a gamble on yourself. That never fails. Listen, if you're looking to get outside your comfort zone and you wanna flip houses and you wanna learn how to buy rentals and you want help, you only learn by doing. So if you wanna take action, take action. Subscribe, follow, share, and peace.